All right, now that we've talked about independent events, we can go ahead and discuss uh, our multiplication rules. So this is multiplication. Okay, so for our multiplication rules, we have to be able to state uh, whether or not an event is independent or not. If an event is not, or let's start off with an independent. So if independent, then the multiplication rule is that the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. So let's go back to our coin example. So if we have the probability of heads and four, so that's the probability of flipping a head and rolling a four on a dice. We know that the probability of heads is one divided by four. Sorry, that would be not one divided by four, but rather one divided by two. Think about this other four multiplied by the probability of rolling a four, which is one out of six, which gives our total probability to be one twelve. So if our events are independent, we can multiply them together. And it doesn't have to be just two events. We can multiply three, four, five, such as we could flip a coin, roll a dice, draw a card. And each of those are independent from one another, and we could just multiply the probabilities together. Now, if events are dependent, okay, so dependent, it's a little bit different. The probability here is going to be the probability of A intersect or and B is equal to the probability of B multiplied by the probability of A given B. Okay, so this is independent events, these are dependent events. So let's, let's talk about two examples of one which could be independent and one which would be dependent. Okay, and they're going to be really close to the same. We're going to talk about the difference between sampling with replacement and sampling without replacement. Let's talk about a deck of cards. So a standard deck of cards has 52 cards in it, you know, the four suits, and uh, various numbers and royalty. So we're going to talk about what's the probability. So I want to know what's the probability of drawing, draw two queens. Okay, well, one of these, de this depends on how we interpret the problem or how the problem is presented to us. And it has to deal with, we'll do one, with replacement and one without. So we'll do with replacement and one without. Okay, so with replacement, I would draw a card from my deck of cards and then I would put it back in and I would draw another card. So that would be with replacement. I'd draw the card, shove it back in, draw the card. And I'd want to know what's the probability that I would draw two queens. Okay, so if I do with replacement, this is going to be independent because drawing one card has no effect upon the draw of the second card. So with replacement, the probability of drawing two queens would be the probability of drawing one and then the probability of drawing another. Okay, so here we go. It would be four, because there's four queens in the deck, divided by 52. That's the probability of drawing one queen, multiplied by, if we put that card back in the deck, it would be then the probability of, once again, drawing a queen. Four times 52. All right, we could, we could calculate that out and we would get our probability. Now. Oftentimes what we say though is no, we're, it says draw two cards. You know, if we play most card games, that means take two cards and keep them in your hand, not draw a card, put it back in the deck and draw another card. So this is without replacement. This is a dependent event. 
Okay, so the probability of A and B is going to be, okay, the probability of B multiplied by the, pro the conditional probability. Okay, so we've got these two queens. So the probability of drawing a queen is going to be on that first one, 4 divided by 52. Okay, now over here, we'll say what's the probability of now drawing another queen given that B has already occurred, that we drew a queen. Okay, well if we drew a queen already, our sample space and our event space change. If we have a queen in our hands, then our probability has been affected, it has been changed. We would then only have three queens possibly left in the deck. And we'd have one less card as well, where it would be 51. So here we go, we have this idea of our multiplication rules. If we are doing with replacement you know, of drawing a card, so that's an example of an independent event. Draw a card, that's a, what's the probability of drawing one queen multiplied by the probability of drawing another queen. We could also think about from two separate decks. Draw, what's the probability of drawing one queen from one deck? Probability of drawing a queen from another deck. Okay. Here, if we do without replacement, we would draw one card, and that knowing that that card is a queen, that would affect then this other probability because we have changed the sample space. Now, if your, um, if your sample space is large enough, and we, uh, so for example, let's say that we actually went to a card manufacturing plant. So we've got a facility that manufactures millions and millions and millions of cards. And the, the proportions are still the same. For every 52 cards, there are four queens. But now we just have millions of cards. And I say, OK, what's the probability of drawing one queen out of all of these cards? And the probability is, well, it's 4 divided by 52 if you simplify it down. And then I say, OK, now we're going to do it without replacement. So we got the one card, and we're going to draw another card. If your sample space is really big, the difference between with replacement and without replacement is extremely minimal. Yes, there is a difference, but it's so small that it is negligible. So we really need to be paying attention about this with these smaller uh, sample spaces, like 52. Um, but if we have thousands and thousands and thousands or even millions, that the effect of with or without replacement is so small that it can be effectively ignored.